Hey everyone, it's that math magician. On this video, we're gonna take a look at how to solve equations using fraction busters. I know if you watching this video are like anything like my former students, you are tired of fractions. Fractions are so complicated, they make equations a little confusing. The hope is, is that we can learn this nice little method, this kind of like a shortcut if you wanna think about it, of a way to bust up the fractions, to get rid of them, and to make our complicated equations much simpler. So let's go ahead and dive right into an example. I have an equation here written out. It's got some fractions. And what we wanna do is we wanna bust those fractions up and get rid of them. Now the equation I have here is x over six minus five over eight, and it equals four. And as it stands, it's kinda complicated, right? I wanna figure out what x equals. I don't know what that number is but the way it looks is a little confusing because we have two equations there on the left-hand side and they both don't have the same denominator. The one on the left has a six, the one on the right has an eight, so we can't combine them. Now, here is where fraction busting is gonna come into play. Fraction busters are so helpful because what we're gonna do is we're gonna think of a number to multiply every single term in this equation. Notice, I'm breaking up the fractions, but I'm going around every single term, including the four here. That's technically not a fraction, but we gotta make sure we have it included. We have to come up with a number to multiply each term by so that we can bust up those fractions. And here's what you wanna do. You wanna think of a number that six and eight can both go into evenly. You're really trying to find a common multiple between six and eight, so that when we multiply by the number, we'll be able to cancel out the six, cancel out the eight, and the fraction will be busted. Now, I know a lot of you out there might be thinking, okay, I need a common multiple between six and eight. I'll just do six times eight, which makes 48, and I'll use that number as the number to multiply each term by, and then I know I'll be able to bust up this fraction. And while that's not incorrect, you could definitely solve this equation by multiplying each term by 48. It's not the most efficient way. This is a very large number, 48. And when we work this out, we're gonna get even larger numbers, right? 48 times four, it's gonna end up getting up some really high numbers. And I always try to use the least common multiple. Instead of using 48, I think it might be easier to think of, is there a number smaller that six and eight still both have in common? And a way to figure this out is really just to write six and to write eight, and then to just start listing some multiples and see where they match up. Well, some multiples of six are 12, 18, 24, 30, right? There's the first five. Let's start writing out some multiples of eight. Well, eight, 16, 24, 32, and notice what we have here. They both share the number 24 as a common multiple. 24 is actually their least common multiple. Now, looking at that list, I could continue it, and if I were to continue these lists out, we would end up with both lists crossing 48, but again, I'm trying to pick the smallest number. I don't need to use 48. I could, I would still be able to get the right answer, but for this example video and really all of the other example videos I'm going to make, we're always gonna try to use the least common multiple. So I'm gonna take every single term here and I'm gonna multiply it by 24. And watch what happens. We're gonna bust that fraction up. We're gonna see no more fractions after we do this step. Let's jump into it. Six goes into 24, I believe four times. X times four, that creates four X. The fraction is gone. It's been busted up. We no longer have to worry with a fraction in that first term. We got minus, let's do the next one. Eight goes into 24 three times. Five times three, that's gonna give us 15 equals 
4 times 24, I might have to break my calculator out for that one. 4 times 24 gives us 96. Look at what we just did here. We took that complicated fraction at the beginning where we had two fractions, both with different denominators. And we were able to get it to a simpler equation just by multiplying it by their least common multiple. That's what fraction busting is all about. Getting rid of the fractions so that we have a simple equation to now work with where we can solve for x. Please make a note that you also multiply the term that's not a fraction as well. If you have a number that's not as a fraction, still gotta multiply it by the number 24. Alrighty, let's go ahead and finish out this problem. I'm trying to solve for x, so I'm gonna add 15 to both sides. Those 15s right there are gonna cancel. I'll bring down the 4x equals 96 plus 15. I'll punch that into my calculator. That's gonna equal 111. Trying to get x by itself, so I think we need to divide both sides by four. By dividing both sides by four, the fours on the left-hand side cancel out, and we are left with just x equals 111 divided by four. Let's break that calculator out one more time. X equals 27.75. That is the answer for this equation. We were able to solve it by fraction busters. Again, such a powerful tool. If you can find that least common multiple, you can bust those fractions up and be able to solve your equations. It's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.